Well, it's been quite a night here on Fool Us. Two acts have managed to fool the nearly unfoolable Penn and Teller. Can we make it three? Let's meet our next contender and find out. I'm Peter Bois, and I'm from the great state of Maine. When I was three years old, a magician pulled a quarter from my ear, and I remember it like it was yesterday. And that's what got me interested in magic. I got paid 50 bucks to do my first show when I was 15. And when I was, I don't know, 17, and I said, I'm not going to college, I'm going to be a professional magician. And my parents they were like, OK. And, so, and that was it. I'm on the road a lot, probably 150, 200 days a year. I love what I do. If I didn't get paid to do it, I would still be doing it. I love that connection with an audience. It's just this ball of unexplained energy that happens when your show's kicking on all cylinders. I performed in every state except Delaware and Hawaii. If anybody's watching this, please book me in Hawaii. <laughs> We're not being cheap. We're not trying to save money in the lighting. In show business, this is what we call atmosphere. <laughs> I'm setting the scene for our next performer. Welcome to the spooky world of Peter Bois. <laughs> The spiritualist movement started in 1848. To prove that spirits are real, mediums would try and communicate with them, and they would communicate back by writing messages. A common object at the time in schoolhouses were writing slates or chalkboards. Sort of like these, which is what we'll use. I need a couple people to help me out. Would you mind helping me out? What is your name? Melanie. Melanie, very nice to meet you. Thank you very much for helping out. Uh, if you would, please have a seat there. You can give a round of applause to Melanie. And one other person. You, sir, what is your name? Bill. Bill, please give a big round of applause for Bill. Come on up here, Bill. Please have the chair. Melanie, please take uh, your chalkboard. I want you to wipe it down. Make sure there are no, uh, no marks on either side. Make sure there are no marks. Bill, please do the same. Sure. Uh, wipe it down on uh, either side. Yep, just go ahead and give it a wipe. And I'll take the rag back. Thank you very much. Melanie, I'll take the rag back and the chalkboard. Now, when they were about to uh, communicate, they would take a uh, piece of chalk and slide it in between the chalkboards in case someone or something felt like communicating. Would you mind holding onto the chalkboard just like this? Rest them on your lap, we'll get to them in a bit. Melanie, close your eyes. Keep them that way till I tell you. Over the next minute or so, Melanie, I need you to concentrate on any physical experience that happens to you. Don't be scared and don't move, but be aware of any sensation, whether it be hot, cold, tickling, or anything else that you might feel, and remember it. Melanie, open your eyes with your left hand. Point to where it felt like something touched you. Your right shoulder. How many times did you feel it? Twice. You felt it twice. Melanie, I didn't touch or come near you. I actually touched Bill twice on your right shoulder. Isn't that right, Bill? Yes, he did. <laughs> Bill, before we started, you guys clean those chalkboards, right? There are no marks left in yours. There are no marks left in yours? Have you felt anything weird, warm, cold? No. No? deliberate as they always do very spooky great scene setting i loved all of that when you perform this normally what kind of reaction do they get do people get a bit spooked down do they get creeped down by it yes they do yeah some yeah the reactions range from s stunned silence to sometimes a scream or two you know <laughs> pan and teller are ready they've had a good talk about it well you know uh 
We get asked all the time what the hardest things to do in magic are. But one of the hardest things to do in magic is to stand center stage and tell a story that the audience is engaged in and believes in. And a lot of times we've seen a lot of people come out and tell the story and no one gives a damn. <laughs> and you stood there and the whole audience was completely wrapped in their attention. Now we do a trick in our show called the magic bullets or the bullet catch. And it's one of the tricks we're most proud of. And we got help for that trick by a man by the name of Steve Shaw. And Steve Shaw also did something very close to the, uh, to the Genesis song, Invisible Touch. And your performance of it was beautiful for us. Uh, we, we're so happy, and this is an important thing to say, that you did that without a gimmick. You did that with real magic and real thought, and there's people who do that same trick with a gimmick. We don't like it as much. You did it pure, Steve Shaw, and you also did the slate routine, absolutely pure, just the way the spiritualists did it. And we love the whole package, and I think you know that once we've said Steve Shaw, you probably didn't fool us, but boy, do we love that routine. Well, thank you very much. Let me just double check. The mentions there of Steve Shaw and uh, one of your favorite prog rockers, Genesis, that was enough information for you to feel confident they know what you're up to. They know what I'm, what I'm up to, yeah. Wow. But they commended you and said you did a great job. That's high praise in there. Yeah, isn't it? I'm honored. Thank you and very much. And we loved it as well. Pete Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Pete, thank you very much. Well done. Congratulations. Pete don't go away because up next it's time for Penn and Teller themselves to show off one of their magnificent, world-famous pieces of magic. You will not want to miss it.